plugin review. So originally this was going to be a review of the Fab Filter Pro. Uh, so originally this was going to be a review of the Fab Filter Pro Q2, but Fab Filter just updated to the Pro Q3, and they sent me a free license because I purchased the Pro Q2 earlier this month. So that's exciting. This is gonna be a little bit of uh, my introduction to Fab Filter, as well as testing out some of the new features that are in the Pro Q3. Learn audio engineering. Learn audio now. Sound strategies to sound goals. So to start off, it has a really nice interface. It feels very smooth. You can just click anywhere and create a curve. And one thing that I like here is that now you can, you can change the curve right in the little tiny little window. You don't have to go all the way down to the bottom. So you can change it to a filter. And you can also change the, the slope of this right now. And Fab Filter has this new brick wall feature. that is just so clean, absolutely pristine. Very cool. They've also got this new spectrum grab mode that's going to create the outline of the hottest part of each frequency. And you can see all of the areas that it's flagged as like a possible hot spot or a possible resonance. Uh, now, of course, with a lot of this stuff, this is a lot of extra visual information. So you want to make sure that you use your ears to verify if this is actually something that you want to be paying attention to or not. And of course, you can turn this off. I'm pretty sure in the analyzer, you can turn off that mode. Uh, it also has an EQ match, which is really cool. So this would be, uh, this is something that was in uh, Pro Q2, I believe. So this creates like a bizarre EQ curve based on what's happening in another channel. So if you uh, were doing some mastering or you wanted to see how your, how your favorite track is a little bit different in its frequency content than your own, then I, this would be the way to do it. That's really cool. The other thing I really liked about this was their eternal spectrum. External spectrum. So we got the drums and we've got uh, some chords that I also have this plugin on. And right now it's, it's showing me in the red some possible areas of masking. Let's bring in those chords. Notch. This is a really cool, very, very uh, pointy, very narrow bandwidth, very surgical. Uh, let's go back to just a bell. So those hi-hats might be clashing with the chords. So it's telling us that part of the kick and part of the hi-hats may be clashing with the chord instrument, and we can go in and kind of balance and cut little pockets for each one of those, uh, sacrifice some of those frequencies on one instrument so that they come through a little clearer on the other instrument. So this could be a really cool feature when combined with the spectrum grab. You see, we can find where that is, that maybe 194, and we can just change this overall shape. any one of these peaks. You can pull them down or bring them up. Now I wouldn't recommend going to every one and, and doing what it says because you're gonna kill your sound, uh, you're gonna make everything really dull, but this is a really cool feature that if you need help pinpointing certain frequencies or getting used to how certain instruments tend to resonate, you know, you can get used to those hot spots. 
We have the overall gain. And I think they had another in the output. Where is that? Right here. The gain scale. This is, this is kind of the same thing, but it gives us a little bit more room to play with. That we can take the overall gain of all of our bands and increase it or decrease it. It also has phase flip or polarity reverse, which is very cool. Latency, natural phase, and linear phase mode. I'm saying that the natural phase uh, is supposed to be the most symmetrical uh, phase up to Nyquist. And uh, it's supposed to be closely related to the phase response of analog. So it's supposed to give the best quality processing without any artifacts. So if you're boosting uh, a lot of high frequencies, they recommend using the natural phase mode. But I think this was something that was included in the Pro-Q2. The next thing they have is the dynamic EQ. So they've, they've turned this really, really subtly into a dynamic EQ that will either compress the sound or expand that sound. So it's sort of like multi-band compression, um, but it's very intuitive. They've set the ratios and the attack and release to be frequency dependent and content dependent. Uh, so you really only have this one slider that sets the threshold and that's outside of the gain. So we can just pull that down a bit and that's gonna push back on that band. So we can go to any band, we can go to this one where we want the kick, and maybe we want it to, to expand, so we can bring the gain down, and then push the threshold up. And now whenever that kick hits, it gets a, a little extra boost. Um, but it's not adding mud the entire time, so that's, that's actually a really cool they also allow you to change the slope of any band, so you can make these really, really weird square shapes. So that area that we had a bit of masking, we can make this super, super just, I'm just cutting out this one section in particular. So very surgical, wow, very, it feels expensive, it feels very professional. Another thing that's really cool about this plugin is how it lets you orientate the imaging of the EQ. So if we create a band here and then go down to where it says stereo, we can change this to a side, so we can have this as like a flat tilt that only affects the side. And then if we build another one, it's gonna, it's gonna default to side again, but we can change it to only adjust the mids. Now, one thing that's cool here, in the tiny little arrow uh, on the, the small menu, we have this option to split, and this is going to create a clone of that that's going to be for the other side. So for in this orientation, we have mid and side, so it's created an extra little band for the side. And if we create another one over here and turn it back to stereo, hit the arrow and go split. Now we have one for the left and one for the right independent. So if you wanted to EQ some differences on your master bus between your left and right speaker, this is a very easy and simple way to grab that very quickly. Very cool fab filter, very cool. So it's still giving me that there's some areas in the chords here. So you don't have to listen to it. Like this isn't an objective thing that you have to cut out uh, all that all that area there. If you need a little bit of extra help locating that frequency masking area, uh, this can help you and give you some suggestions of, of what to do. And you can go ahead and, and balance between the two instruments. This is really awesome. I was really enjoying the Pro-Q2. I was using it on pretty much every mix. And now, for a free plugin update, I'm, I'm blown away by this. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Definitely recommend it. This isn't a sponsored video, but I do definitely recommend this EQ plugin. It just sounds super clean and pristine and surgical. So definitely give it a try if you're in the market for a new EQ. As always, thanks for watching this video. Leave a like if it helped you out. I will leave a link to the Pro Q3 in the description if you want to check it out. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for fresh weekly content. It really helps me out when you do that. And as always, I will see you in the next video.